before you make another video or publish another article, I'm going to suggest now that you polish your service and product and homepage to perfection because those are the pages where the visitor is deciding whether or not to become a lead. This is the game. Optimization should be done from the bottom of the funnel up. So pause all of your marketing, watch this video. I'm going to use AI to drive better leads. And that's been the focus of my career. I've done 20 plus years of B2B lead generation. This is my best advice for growing actual demand and marketing qualified leads uh, without doing anything else in your marketing. Check your own analytics. The visitor who starts their experience on a non-blog post is far, far more likely to become a marketing qualified lead because of their intent. They're not here to get a question answered. They're here because they're considering working with you. Does that page do a good job? Is it working harder? Is it answering questions? It is addressing objections? It is using supportive evidence? We're going to find out all that right now, and we're going to use, use AI to do it. I could choose any example. I'm choosing zoos. For the next few minutes, we're going to be targeting zookeepers. We're different service providers who are interested in attracting zookeepers to our, our websites and converting them into leads. Okay, to understand this audience, we need to first train AI on the target. So we're going to use a persona prompt. Here's a persona prompt. It's very basic. I've got much more elaborate ways to do that. Uh, you may have already good prompts or ideal client profiles or battle-tested sales vetted uh, ICPs. Uh, if so, use those. If not, this will get you partway there. It simply says, build me a persona of a job title in an industry, in a geography, a company. They've got roles, responsibilities, and they've got a problem and they're looking for help, right? We put in our own business category. And I want to know four things, their hopes and dreams, their fears and concerns, their emotional triggers, and their decision criteria for selecting a company like ours. That should be sufficient. Put that in for a zookeepers. Here's what I get back. I'm looking for that to give me the yeah, filling in the blanks, right? This is what we're, this is who we talk to. This is what they're looking for. And that's the hopes, dreams, fears, concerns, triggers, and decision criteria. Okay. What it comes back with is often pretty good. I'm not going to read this in detail, but clearly the zookeeper has certain concerns. They care about animals. Uh, they're, they're worried about disease outbreaks and budget cuts. Uh, they make decisions based on, you know, who has proven experience. Uh, they, have a, they want to know that the person has a track record of keeping their appointments. They want to minimize animal stress. You get the idea. I've done this dozens of times with clients and prospects and friends, and the feedback is normally, yeah, that's really good. Or that's very close, but it's not perfect. So fix it. Don't trust AI. Trust yourself. Assume it's incorrect. Now, suppose we're a company that provides exotic animal animal veterinary services. Uh, we've got a web page. This page is designed to sell. It, this is the page where the person decides whether or not to become a lead. This is the moment of truth. This is the hardest working page on our site, right? So, is it going to generate leads? Is it good? Is it missing anything? Does it answer questions? Does it address objections? Or is our zookeeper visitor super confused? Huh? I can't tell. Do they do this? Do they do it for people like us? Uh, how soon would they get back to us? Are they certified? Do they have this experience? It's missing a ton of stuff. So next steps. Within that same persona chat, or if you took the, the information out of the persona into a PDF, you're going to drag that into this next prompt and give it a full page screenshot. Use TechSmith's Snagit or a free Chrome extension like Go Full Page. Take a full page screenshot of that page and give it a conversion optimization prompt. Does the header indicate what this service is all about? Does the copy answer their questions and address their objections? Is the order of the messages aligned with their prioritized information needs? Does it use supportive evidence? to support its claims, or is it just a bunch of unsupported marketing claims? Does it trigger cognitive biases that makes the visitor more likely to take an action? Okay. Does it have a good call to action? This is a basic, this is like best practices in a big prompt. You get the idea. But what it then does is it comes back and rates the effectiveness of the page, rates the extent to which it does and does not align with this person's information needs, right? Uh, so what does it say? The header? We did a pretty good job. Four out of five complete veterinary services. What about supportive evidence? Ooh, uh-oh, uh, we got a two out of five. Uh, that's not very good. Uh, we did not support our claims. We didn't use any testimonials or proof points or data or statistics or years in business or team credentials. You can imagine all the things, right? We'll talk about that more in a second. Does it connect on a personal level by showing who we are? Uh, kinda, could be better. 
Uh, does it trigger cognitive biases, reminding them what goes wrong if you get bad veterinary services or don't work with an expert, right? You're risking your animal's health. Uh, does it have a call to action? Not really. Contact is not a call to action. That's not a strong verb. You can do better than that. Go repair those. You know the remedies. Go go polish up that page until it's a minor masterpiece of conversion and lead generation. Look how happy these zookeepers are. Much better. If you want to bring, you're going to a meeting, you want to make that into a visual, make me a radial spider graph of this data. So fun. Have it make charts for you. Really, really interesting. Uh, it's hard to do ignore you in a meeting if you bring a chart with you. There are actually prompts that specifically audit pages for supportive evidence. The whole point being, don't make a bunch of unsupported marketing claims. Obvious? I think so. Most web pages on the internet are just piles of unsupported marketing claims. We love us. We're number one. Insufficient. Not going to do the job. You need to support all of your claims with evidence and give them reasons to believe. Here's an example. Uh, we're, uh, we're marketing a zoology, a zoology course to zookeepers. Uh, is this page trustworthy? Is this company legit? Uh, is, do, do they, will they do what they say they do? Do other people believe in this? It's got a lot of information and down at the bottom is a big price tag and there are some logos, but maybe we could do better. Did we miss any opportunities to add testimonials, case studies, awards, years in business, the size of our operations, our certifications, the team credentials, all these things? Let's try a prompt. Okay, you, there's the screenshot. Again, you're a conversion optimization expert. Your task is to evaluate the extent to which the provided page uses supportive evidence. And there's all kinds of supportive evidence. Rate the extent to which it uses supportive evidence. Now, obviously, it's, we're not going to use all of these. No need to use all of these. The point is not to use each specific type. The point is to support our marketing claims. But still, as a useful audit, page support, right, uh, use of proof points, uh, it says we did not do very well. At the very bottom of the page, and you and I both saw that was uh, very low on the visual hierarchy, uh, we did have those logos, but there's really nothing else there. At the very bottom, we had two of those things. We could definitely do a better job of supporting our claims. It gave us a two out of five, guys. <laughs> we can do better than that. Uh, want some ideas on recommendations? Yes, that same prompt will give you recommendations. Add student testimonials. Showcase career outcomes. Highlight your instructor credentials. These are all great ideas. These are all things that could improve the conversion rate. And by the way, there might be visitors on that page right now. You should all feel urgency to fix these problems today. And then, kind of fun, this prompt will, a second prompt will actually uh, make a list of all the claims that you left unsupported. This is a list of all your unsupported marketing claims. What a fantastic use for AI. Show me all the things that I said but didn't support with evidence on my key pages, the money page, the service or product page. Final thing, calls to action. Uh, contact us, as we said, is not a call to action. Now we're a, a zoo enclosure design company, and we've got a button at the top, schedule an office tour. Hmm, not sure that that's really the best call to action. Uh, there's another one here at the bottom of the page, which we could, I don't know if that's going to do a good job. Need sustainable solutions? Contact us. Uh, let's let AI uh, audit this for us. I give it the screenshot, I give it the prompt, and, a, and uh, the persona, and I'm asking it to... You know, a good call to action has a button in the top right. Write five short examples for CTAs for the top right. I want to see one for the primary hero area, top of the page, first page block, right? There's a little more space for that. Write a larger one, maybe put a little kicker, a reason, you know, a, 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 a way to address objections right below that other prompt. And maybe a soft conversion, right? If they're not ready to take an action, uh, maybe some like download a guide or something like that. Immediately, it comes back with some really interesting ideas for calls to action. Plan your project. Request a consult. Right? Get design insights. What about for the primary hero area? Create a healthier zoo habitat. That aligns with our, our persona's needs, right? That's what they care about. That, that, that goes to the emotions that triggered this little journey for them. And finally, a soft conversion, other options for that. Uh, you know, Download a habitat planning guide. Uh, see the case studies. Explore our design services. These ones would encourage the visitor to just to keep exploring and to go deeper. Uh, I think that, well, that's an improvement. Chat with a zoo design specialist. I didn't take any of its suggestions. I just kind of adapted those and made one that I thought would be much better. Start collaborating within a week. Answers a final question. The whole idea here is to stop using AI to try to be more efficient and to save a little time on a task. 
quit looking for efficiencies. Instead, look for deficiencies on that key part of the buyer journey where they're making a decision of whether or not to click, to hire, to call, right? Whether they want to start a conversation. Websites don't sell. B2B lead gen websites don't sell. That's not the point. They're supposed to start a conversation. And AI is a great way to see your site from the point of view of your visitor. Uh, AI persona-driven gap analysis on those critical pages for lead generation. One of the coolest things I've done with AI in my career so far to date. Andy from Orbit Media, if you know anybody who'd find this useful, we'd be grateful if you shared it. And if you are struggling to uh, create a steady stream of qualified leads through your digital programs, uh, that's exactly what we do. Web design and development, uh, website optimization. Feel free to reach out anytime. Thanks for watching.